What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. You might have seen her doing some amazing things all over social media, traveling to all these amazing places. Erica Franco, how are you? How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. I've, I've actually been, I've been anticipating this for a little while. I'm a little nervous, so I'm excited to get into all the things that you're doing for our community out there. Yes, yes. Very exciting. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. So before we go ahead and get started, how long have you been in a wheelchair and what level is your injury for the people out there who don't know? Um, so I got injured November 1st of 2018. So okay. this year it'll be five years in November um, and okay. I'm six T7 incomplete. So I do have movement and I do have full sensation for sure. Okay. Okay. Now what level now, now for the people out there who don't know what level on your body do you kind of like stop feeling and start feeling? Like around here, down. Okay. All right, then. Okay, so, I mean, let's just go ahead and get to all the amazing things that you're doing on social media now. I see you traveling all over the place. Um, I guess, what, what, what would be your ideal traveling destination? Ideal would be um, somewhere warm, for sure. Okay. I'm not okay. a live in California, so I definitely love the sun. Okay. Um, somewhere warm, and um, I think before pre-injury, I never imagined, like, you know, you don't consider the accessibility. Um, so I think now, being different places, I'm intrigued at different countries and how they handle, like, their ADA. Um, okay. So that's something that's been, like, really interesting to just figure out, kind of. Um, and, like, I just, that's really interesting for me, yeah. Okay. Are there any places that you want to go that, you know, you might be afraid to go because you don't know about the accessibility? Um, I think, like, if you're going big, go big or go home, probably, like, Alaska. Ooh, go big or go home. Like I one. mean, it seems, it seems like everything that you got going on on your social media, it seems like you are going big. Uh, so that's why I kind of asked that question. Now, have you been to any places pre-injury that – you are interested to go back to post-injury to see how it is? Oh, at the top of my list for sure would be Italy. Um, it was so gorgeous. The food was okay. amazing. But I remember like even like pre-injury, it mm -hmm. was around like so much cobblestone and oh. um, a lot of walking. So like yeah. now that would be very interesting going back because my body does not like cobblestones. <laughs> the cobblestones Ooh. was like, my spasms um so that'll be like that would be very interesting yeah mm, okay okay now i mean when i just went to paris not too long ago there was cobblestone on certain parts of the street and i would have to tell you it was excruciating really kind of like just maneuvering because if the cobblestone was had like deep grooves in it it was like very hard to get through but if it was like little small ones it wasn't as hard, but, you know, your legs start kind of falling off the chair, so it kind of gets, like, annoying. But, yeah, cobblestone isn't where it's at. If you ever travel out the country somewhere like that where there is a lot of cobblestone, I definitely suggest something like a smart drive or a smooth or even an electric wheelchair if you, you know, wouldn't mind going that way. So, but, yeah, the cobblestone is, is horrible. <laughs> yeah. What – okay, what is, like uh, – let me see. Like, what is, like, your – like, all right. I got to go to this place. This is like the, the, the place I have to get to my, my one and only like, like this is it. Like, where is that place at? Oh, the literally like number one bucket list for sure. Would yeah. be Mahal. Like I refuse oh. to die without seeing the Taj Mahal. It's like gorgeous. And my favorite animal is a tiger and they have like tiger sanctuaries nearby. And like, what? it seems like a lot of checks off lists to go. So yeah. what I'd love to make that happen. Okay. You know what? I never, I've thought about it, but I never really, I, I was probably expecting myself to ever go there. So it wasn't, it wasn't one of them places where I really kind of, you know, seen it was like, you know, I got to get there, but you know what? I might have to put that on the list now because it is a beautiful place. And I believe the, uh, the guy he built it for his wife, correct? His yeah. wife that passed away? Full love story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then also if you, if you, I never was ever really deep into Legos, but if you're into Legos, they have a Taj Mahal set that you can kind of build that's actually like really nice as well. So 
I would just kind of throw that in there because somebody I did a podcast where we was talking about Lego, so I was just throwing it out there because they get very like detailed into like you know things that people are into. So yeah, I've uh, seen the flower ones recently, and I think I kind of want to buy those just for myself. Like they think they're just so- oh okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you know what to be. <laughs> Are you talking about the, uh, I think it's like a green flower with like a little pink in it? Um, It's like a bouquet set and then there are like multiple flowers in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look, just be careful because they get expensive. Okay. The <laughs> Lego sets ain't yes, cheap. but I've heard that too. Like I've never really, when I was little, I mean, the biggest I got was like the big chunky Legos. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I haven't really done Legos. Mm, when it comes to them big sets, yeah, they get like like three, four hundred bucks. Like it's not, it's not cheap. So, okay. Now, you've been in a wheelchair almost five years, and how was it for you traveling for the first time? Because I know for some of us it could be a little scary. I know for me it was scary, but I was really just anxious to really kind of get back out there. So it wasn't a deterrent for me. So how was it for you getting back out there into the traveling scene and you know finally traveling? I think, um, well, uh, in hindsight, I -hmm. did a lot of like, just going for it when I first got injured. Like I was very like, let's just rip the bandaid off. So I was, okay. I think I had only been home for like maybe two and a half months before Mm -hmm. I traveled, um, on my first trip and I actually went to Mexico. I went to Cabo Um, so I know everyone was like, are you ready? Are you sure? Like, that's not even local. Like, you know, like that's not even the United States. Like uh, a lot of people, when I first mentioned it, cause I was um, doing triumph and I was going to their support groups and they were like, I haven't even been international. Like, I don't think you're ready. And like, uh, I was kind of, I think that made me more scared telling people because in my head, I was like, I already booked it. It's happening. Like there's no going back, but then (laughs) hearing like all these people just like bracing me for like what I thought might be like the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. Um, No, it was like, uh, it was so much fun. Actually. Um, I went, it was like my first time ever being on a plane. Okay. Uh, Wheelchair. I mean, luckily I was with my parents and I did take my friend with me. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of help. It was, no issue really this was like i didn't even know wheelchairs could get damaged um so i was like like i said in hindsight it was almost a double-edged thing because it was kind of good because like i mean ignorance is bliss for sure i was Mm -hmm. not scared about my wheelchair getting damaged because i didn't even know that could happen i was not scared Mm -hmm. about like transportation like i wasn't scared about all these things because i didn't know what it was like to like face all difficulties um at Mm -hmm. that so, yeah, we didn't even stay in, like, an ADA hotel room, but our hotel Ooh, was nice, okay. really big, um, and I had to, like, figure out, like, the bathroom was nice and big. The only thing is they didn't have, like, the roll-in shower, so I had, like, yeah. a big, like, jacuzzi bathtub, which was <laughs> nice, but yeah. it was definitely, like, a struggle, um, so I, I actually would, sh- um, like, semi-half shower after getting out of the pool in, like, their, uh, like the pool the shower roll under shower yeah because those were like rolling and honestly it would just like put a plastic bag over my backrest and take yeah. my coat and like do a little mini shower and then mm-hmm. then like every other day shower in like that big bathtub so yeah that was like quite an adventure mm. um for sure yeah okay you, you know what's so crazy that's the first time i ever heard of somebody actually showering in their shower chair but it, like it's the first time I heard somebody talk about it, but I've actually done it myself. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, so yeah, looks, looks, you, looks. You, sometimes you just gotta find a way. That's it. Oh yeah, like I, I think uh, traveling, regardless if you're in a wheelchair or not, half the time is like figuring stuff out. Like I forgot yeah. this. How am I gonna make this work? Or like I mm-hmm. didn't have this. Or now the weather is not what I thought it was yeah. gonna be. I feel like honestly, a lot of traveling, like if you'd like to travel and you want to continue traveling, a lot of it is like just being open minded. Um, and mm-hmm. then you add care, so like another level to open mindedness. Um, like yeah. I remember, right, we got to the resort and there was no pool lifts. Um, and I hadn't mm. gone to this in therapy, so I was like, I've never even okay. been yet. <laughs> um, so like, but like, I feel like I'm very open to like if people want to assist. Um, so I think. Mm-hmm. I- parents with me I had my friend and it was just like I just like get down to the edge of the little pool and then you know yeah. take by step and then here I am swimming you know um mm-hmm. so yeah it was a lot of that but looking back it honestly I 
I'm so glad I just took the jump for it. Um, because yeah. then like two months after that, I was like on my next vacation. Like I was like, this is like easy. Like it's, it's possible, you know, not, it's not going to yeah. be hard, but it's doable. And I enjoyed my time and mm-hmm. yeah, loved it. Yeah. Mm. You know, I feel like, I feel like most of the time when it comes to a spinal cord injury, you psych yourself out a lot. You know, and I feel like that that's that's how it is for most people. And like you said, sometimes you look, you just gotta kind of go for it, and you really just gotta find a way while you're down there, because that's how it was when I was in Colombia. Nothing out there was accessible, but we just, you know, we just went for it, and we went out there. And a lot of the times, it was, you know, uh, it was really the people helping me. So you know, like we went. Uh, like, uh, I know we got onto this like little small boat that didn't even look like it could fit 10 people. It looked like it could fit two people, but you know, 10 of us had to get on there and we got on there. They picked me up, brought me onto the boat. And you know, like some, like I would say for sure, if I'm abroad or if I'm on vacation, I'm more inclined to allow somebody to help me out versus, you know, here back in the States, you know, but I feel like here in the States, they'd be a lot safer than abroad. But you know, I guess like when in Rome, I look, I'm here, let's do it. I agree. And I, and I want to add, like, I think it's just also us being in like vacation mode. Um, uh, that I feel like you're more relaxed. Like, honestly, before my injury, I took like maybe one vacation a year, a one, because like, mm. as like an abled body, you're like, it's like work, life, and then extra. And as a disabled yeah. person, I feel like you have a lot more time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, never could have imagined like last year I left to Mexico for almost three months. Like I could mm. never have fit that into my schedule before. Um, and okay. also like, like just being out there, like you were not in a rush to like go anywhere. Like I feel like here and also me prior to my injury, I had that mentality of like work hard, work harder, running from one thing to another, never having enough time. And I feel like mm. now I make sure to make time One it's just, you know, just prep prep makes your injury so much easier like prepping for your day oh, yes. yourself time ensures that 90 percent time you will have time for if you do have those mistakes or if you have stuff come up and i think on vacation mm-hmm. all you have is time so yeah, yeah it might be a little bit more relaxed to get like carried into like a pool of course as opposed to here if i'm like getting carried into a restaurant like oh that kind of sucks but it's the pool or it's the beach yeah. or it's this new experience so i feel like um also like that mentality like helps out so much on vacation yeah now, look i i definitely agree with you i definitely agree with you so i mean i i heard that you say that you went to mexico for like almost 3 months what do you feel like was the most challenging part of being out there while also having a spinal cord injury? Um, I think is like the loss of independence for those three months. Um, here, I drive. I can get to point Ooh, okay. A when I want. Um, I like know my way around my own home to like shower and like get all my stuff done. And then I go to Mexico, which I mean, I'm very blessed. My family out there, they have like this Im- huge room with a private bathroom for me mm. when I so that obviously makes my stay a lot more comfortable but yeah I don't have my car and there are stairs to get in and out of the home so anytime I want to leave I have to like ask for help and stuff like that so you lose a little bit of independence for me when I go um Mm -hmm. but other than that I adjust really easy it's kind of hard to not love all the good food and (laughs) yeah good times um and then I mean Mexico is its own country there's a lot more freedom out there to Mm -hmm. just whatever you want. Uh, yeah. Definitely, I can't complain at that, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was a little shocking how you said that, you know, you lose your independence by being out there because I never heard, really heard it put like that, even though that is, that would be pretty much exactly what you do. You, you lose your independence. You lose a little bit of independence kind of being out there. But I feel like that while being on vacation, I feel like that that's kind of the price that you pay for being on vacation is losing a little bit of your independence when it comes to, you know, this injury and everything. So, okay. And earlier I heard you say something about school. So how was it for you getting back into school and how long did it take for you to actually go back to school after your injury? 
Okay, so I left the hospital, I want to say, like, um, very short of two months. And within, okay. I was in my class. So uh, I got injured in November. And okay. so I missed the finishing of that semester. And okay. in January, I was, like, in my class again. <laughs> um, which I had a lot of, like... Uh, I would say like a lot of resistance from everyone, from like even my advisor, my professors, yeah. my parents, like everyone was like, no, 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 no. Um, but I feel like I'm very headstrong. And like once I put my mind to it, um, there's no going back. Also, I just wanted to just like get back into my normal life and my normal routine. I just didn't see the point in taking time off and then having to go because at this point I was in my program um so okay. if I took the time off I would have had to take the whole year off and then oh, go back okay. with that new makes more sense. People, um for my program mm -hmm. and I felt like this is this injury is not going to rob me one a year and two of the experience like I had already met these people for like three months I kind of had already got yeah. my group in um, it, I just didn't want it to rob me of that, you know, so okay. figured like we're going to figure this out. Like, I think a lot of the injury is just figuring out your new normal and it's mm -hmm. only going to happen with practice. Yeah. So uh, exactly. I just kind of was like I leaned a lot on my mom for sure. Um, I was blessed mm -hmm. that she took uh, she quit her job. So she was able to take me to and from school and okay. some days. She did wait for me there or she would just drop me off and pick me back yeah. up um so like shout out to my mom <laughs> but <laughs> yeah for that first it was different because i was in class and i never once realized we didn't even have an ada desk in our mm, okay i went on the first day back and my professors were like we are so sorry like we were not prepped um like mm -hmm. we should have been so then it was like that and then i Obviously, I went back so fast that I wasn't aware of, like, all the programs that are out there and all the help that you can get. So I really went back, like, blindfolded for the first semester. And mm -hmm. as I went gradually in my semester, I started learning, like, wow, there's, like, an ADA tram, little tram that can take me to and from my classes on campus. So I'm not, like, pushing all up this hill. Like, um, so I did have to, like... Obviously, when you do things too uh, soon, you kind of get the shorter end of the stick. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just glad to be back. I didn't lose any time. I didn't lose any work. I didn't lose any credits. Um, and that year flew by, and I did one more, and then I got my degree. And then I did my master's in a year after that. So Ooh, definitely okay. Okay. worth it for now, me. Now, when it came to school, I know you said that you was already in the program for a little bit, correct? Yeah. Okay, so when you finally do go back, are these the same people that you were in class with before? Yeah, and I get a lot of questions of whether that was more uncomfortable for me or mm -hmm. less uncomfortable. Um, I want to say for me, at least, it's a bit of both because uh, okay. I would say, like, more comfortable because I don't have to explain anything when when that was going on for me but then when I started my master's program with all these strangers I'm like you know I don't ever have to explain anything to anyone so like that's not really a bonus like it's just in my head because I knew that they knew you know but yeah. really I'm out in the world and no one knows that I was yeah. injured or how long I was not injured um so that should have never mattered um mm -hmm. but I guess the only positive I will say is that they were more understanding of like, if I needed help or like, I feel like, um, in the beginning I was coddled a little bit, um, mm -hmm. even by my professors. Uh, like, I feel like it was like, if you ever need anything, like those talks on the regular, yeah. which did make me feel a little bit more comfortable when I did need stuff, as opposed to like in my master's program, no one knew me. No one had any idea, and it was like, oh, it's just this girl in the wheelchair. If you need something, let us know for, like, day one. And then after that, it was like, you're on your own. Um, yeah. So, I guess, like, it depends on what you need. Um, but now, both worked out fine. Yeah. Uh, but I did you appreciate the second half a lot more, or did you prefer the first part? I think I was ready 
at, at for the second part. But I don't think I would have been ready for that in the beginning because mm, I okay. I did, and I didn't want to explain like, oh, it's because like, for example, like uh, I'll use an example. In the beginning, I took a lot longer to use the restroom because like I didn't even know how to put my pants on. <laughs> like, like when I say I was like a week fresh from coming home. Yeah. Like, I was, like, a week fresh, you know? So, like, at, in the beginning, obviously, putting your pants on maybe, what, takes, like, 20, 30 minutes, like, something crazy. Yeah. Now I can do it in, like, bam, you know? But okay. in the beginning, it was, like, I needed time. So it was easier to have those conversations. Yeah. And I was, like, by the way, I'm going to try and use the restroom before, but sometime during this class, I might be gone for 30 minutes, and I don't want <laughs> to think that it's because, like, I don't want to be here. I'm, like, probably sweating and, like, crying in the restroom trying to, like, put these pants on mm -hmm. fast. Um, mm. So I think that's what I did need in the beginning for them to just be like coddling and like, okay with these things as mm. opposed to like, I don't know if I would have felt as comfortable in my master's class asking them for 30 extra minutes. Like they don't even know who I am or like, what do you mean you need 30 minutes to go to the restroom? You know, like I think yeah. that would have been um, definitely a harder conversation to have, which like, I'm sure they would have been, like, co completely okay with it and, like, you know, but it just, at the time, it made more sense the first time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, damn, I couldn't, I really couldn't even imagine getting back out there whenever, you know, it takes 30 minutes to put your pants on. Because, look, I was there. I was there when I, I was there whenever I felt like I would never be able to put on my own shoes. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, no, I definitely understand and yeah. now I do all that by myself but before I couldn't even imagine so. I mean it's crazy because so I so. go to, like my old rehab hospital and I go and speak to them and I do let them know like this is the time to like start learning because I remember when I was in the hospital mm -hmm. and I wanted, I think I, what I wanted was like as much normalist normalcy as I could get and I talk about this a lot like as a when you become injured like through like an SEI or something that like is not like your whole life, you go through this like a part of like losing yourself and you, for me, it was healthy to get as much as I could back as fast as I could. So like mm -hmm. I cut a lot of, like I cut, I couldn't walk and stuff like that. Like you lose so much yeah. control. You just pick at it wherever you can get it. Like anywhere mm -hmm. I could find a bit of control, I was like, oh my gosh, like give it to me, you know? So in the beginning, I remember... I was like maybe two weeks injured and I asked my nurse like can I practice during OT to like straighten my hair and her reaction was like why no one's gonna come and like see you which shame on that nurse <laughs> um because like who cares I'm trying to like practice and like get something down that maybe to her was like oh this material ass girl like why why are you mm -hmm. even thinking you know, but to me, it was like, that's something I can learn and like feel good about myself or like yeah. learning to do my makeup. And like, so I thought that's funny that you mentioned the shoes because I was literally like maybe two weeks um, at my rehab hospital and I'd FaceTime my cousins to bring me clothes from home because I was mm -hmm. tired in the scrubs they give you and like the little yeah. gowns. And I remember my, my nurse would be like, it's just it just, why are you struggling? And I'm like, well, eventually I'm going to want to wear this stuff and I want to learn mm -hmm. now and have help. Um, so I would be in the hospital, like hoodies and like sweats and like, I'm putting my vans on immediately. Like, even mm -hmm. though my feet would swell, I wouldn't care, but it was like, I felt more me, um, in that sense. So I think since I started practicing early in the hospital, I kind of got a little bit more comfortable. So when I was out in the real world, it wasn't like a big jump almost. Yeah. Um, as like opposed to if I would have not done anything and just been in the hospital scrubs and like yeah. not did my hair. And they like also confidence wise, like I would have been a wreck because it, I just not, I'm not used to that. You know, I'm not used to mm -hmm. just, that's not my normal attire <laughs> for sure. No, I definitely feel like you know, when it comes to PT and OT, they know they know this injury on paper, but they're not going through. So, so they don't understand the little things that we might want to do or that we might struggle to do because they've seen, you know, a thousand people come here and do it, but every injury is different. And then also they really don't understand what it feels like to be in a wheelchair and have to go through all these emotions and, you know, just finding a little piece, you know, or you know, just, just 
just finding a little piece in, you know, straightening your hair. Like they don't understand what type of confidence boost that that would, you know, give somebody like us. And, you know, they would, you know, say some little things or get frustrated or whatever. But trust me, I dealt with the same exact thing. They feel like they, they know everything. And yeah, just. <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, I, I think I was really blessed because my OT and my PT were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I literally loved them. They would even push me hard. Like, you want to learn how to put pants on? Let's move mm -hmm. on. Jeans. And I was like, there's no way I can put jeans on. But I was all for it because I yeah. live in jeans. Like, I love jeans. So I was like, yes, I don't wear sweats other than when I'm, like, at home. Mm -hmm. right? So, like, that was, like, motivation for me. Um, For me, it was more like the nurses because, I mean, I do understand. They're just trying to get in and out. They have a bunch of patients to see. um, And they don't want to see me struggling for 20 minutes putting pants on. Like, mm -hmm. they don't. Like, they're just trying to cap me or whatever, yeah. help me in certain ways. Um, so I do understand that point. Um, but I am very blessed that my PTs and my OTs would schedule time out, especially OT, because that's, like, where you do a lot of that stuff. Um, schedule mm -hmm. time out to, like, learn how to put my shoes on or, like, learn how to do this. So when I left, yeah. I was pretty okay. Um, but, like, they say, like, the real work begins at home. Um, so that's when either you can either, like, push through and like just practice 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 or you can give in and have people help you and then maybe not be as fast or as comfortable mm -hmm. doing it in public which is what I was trying to get to because I knew the whole time while I was in rehab that my goal yeah. was cool so I kept saying like you know I have two weeks to get this down I have a week to get this. I have four days to get this down like you know so I really yeah kind of left with that mentality so I think yeah. that really helped I had a goal that I was working towards even in the mm. hospital for being outside okay. okay okay now I do know like there is a sense of urgency to get home but I feel like that most people don't realize that when they get home is it, it's kind of a different world because you know your home isn't as accessible as this hospital over here but you're not realizing that until you actually get home so when you finally do get home how was that adjustment for you? Oh, yeah. I That's like a big point we talk about in group because yeah. I know if I get home, me included, I broke all the rules. I was like, <laughs> I let, I literally was like threatening to leave at AMA because it was December 23rd. And I was like, mm -hmm. I do not want to be here for Christmas. Like, there's no fucking way I yeah. want to be home. Because like my thing was they would only give me passes for like four hours. And I'm like, I'm Hispanic. Like my Christmas is two days. So I need to mm -hmm. make home by the 24th. Um, So it was like literally the 23rd at night. And I was like yeah. begging and crying. And he was like, okay, like we'll just do it. And hopefully you're not back in a week because you want to go home so bad. Thankfully, I wasn't back in a week um, and it worked out for me. But mm -hmm. yeah, going home is like its own other um, monster to tackle in a sense. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough that like my dad is like super handy. So he remodeled our whole bathroom and he remodeled mm. my whole bathroom while I was in the hospital. Um, so, but we all know structural only goes so far. <laughs> and so like, yeah, I had like a good amount of space, but I was like, I never realized like the difference of like bed height between like my hospital bed. And then I came home and like, I did have the nice, um, like sleep number that goes up that my job mm -hmm. actually, um, gifted me, which was really nice. Uh, but that thing is thick. <laughs> like, I feel like also that's why I probably have no problem in hotel beds because my bed is like that hotel bed height. Like it's high. Uh, oh, so, oh, my, mine is definitely high. Mine is super high. Yeah, so. but I feel like there's no shame in like using assistive devices, which I think people really shun, which they shouldn't because like maybe for like a full month, I was still using my slide board to get in and out of bed, but okay. I was doing it on my own. And that's where I say like, if you, if, if I would not have done that for a month and I would have mm -hmm. just given up and like had like my mom help me, I would have never mm -hmm. learned because my excuse would have been like, it's just so high. It's just so high. I was like, no, like, let me just like do the board, use the board. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, and I did use the board for like a month and it worked out. And then like, same thing like the restroom like it was big but like my transfers weren't as good which I feel like those take a while to learn so like I, mom just like literally watch me and I think as a parent like that was probably so hard for her just to like not be able to be like hands-on and just watch um mm -hmm. but 
I think it's really good to set boundaries um, in the beginning. So I did, while I was still at rehab, have the talk with my parents. I told them, like, you know what? I've lost control of, like, 100% of what I can do. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I do go and reach the water bottle, I don't need, like, 10 people doing it for me because that's, like, a little thing that I can still do. And, like, this would be the example. So, like, I had a rule, and the rule was, like, you are not allowed to help until I ask. Um, So, like... That was a good rule we set because then I didn't, we didn't have to fight every time about this issue, which I feel like it mm, does. Okay. You don't talk about it. Um, so they knew like, even if I was huffing and puffing and like on the verge of a breakdown, it was just like, all they could do is watch. And then finally I would be like, okay, help, you know, like, okay, like I give in or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And there were some moments that I was like, yeah, help me, you know? Um, but for the most part, I think that really helped. Uh, just like having the the safety net of them watching, mm-hmm. um, yeah. but like still forcing myself to like figure it out because yeah. it, it, there's no way around it other than just practice. Like other than getting exactly. in a hundred times, like that's how I did it. And um, I've fallen a couple times still. It's just, it happened, you know, not saying it's going to be a foolproof plan, but for the most part, um, I can yeah. say count the times like on the hand mm-hmm. okay yeah i try to tell everybody i know doing pt and ot at the beginning kid can really feel impossible and you know you could be frustrated you could be upset at the world but that is the key time that you should be learning this stuff taking in all this information because i tell people what you do at the beginning in therapy and all throughout therapy is going to be things that you use and utilize every single day for the rest of your life. Yeah. All right. So you want to get those things down as much as possible. And also, you know, you, you do want to network. I feel like that that was my biggest, that was my biggest mistake was not networking with people that were in the same situation as me. And I feel like I could have, you know, picked up a lot of gain from them versus finding out on myself, but the hard way. You know, and and hindsight is always twenty twenty. But I just wish I would have, you know, really reached out or took in the information that people wanted to give me because I was just so stubborn and not wanting to, you know, really just really listen and everything, you know. But it, look, repetition, doing things over and over again until you know you get perfect at it. And like I try to tell people too all the time when it comes to doing a transfer, look, you just have to just keep doing it, just keep doing it. It's for me, it's all about look if you got. I would say like um uh I would say if you got like like full movement in your hands, the transfer shouldn't really be a problem because it's really all about hand placement and it's all about foot placement. And if you really, you know, put those things down like in good positions, your legs will actually catapult you over. So it's kind of like using them without using them in a way. I think I so have I, um yeah disagree a bit <laughs> okay, oh, okay. Ooh, oh yeah let's do it <laughs> i feel like everyone is different um so mm-hmm. i have immense tone in my legs like immense like i can okay. because of the tone so for me any movement will just extend my legs out fully so when i first mm, okay i was doing like hardcore therapy 40 hours a week and i the first two hours literally were just dedicated transfers and I was so over it because my legs would spasm and I was okay. just like flop, either flop forward or like I couldn't get my legs to like control themselves enough. And the same issue when I started driving and I started seeing the videos of people and they would just be like, and then you just throw your legs in the car. And I'm like, fuck, now I got to find another video because my legs don't do that. Like, my legs are not Floppy McGee. So it's so hard um, when I kept watching these videos and, like, going over transfers and everyone just kept saying, oh, you just l- let your top body do the work. You just like... And I was like, mm, not for my body. And I even stumped my therapist a couple times because she was okay. like, oh, let's try this or let's try that. So that's where I would really say, like besides how your body is and you know despite how you think like oh I can't do it because of 
X, Y, and Z, or like some part of your body, or like even quadriplegics. Like sometimes it's like, oh, I can't do that because of my upper body strength in my hands. But it's like you're gonna find your way, and mm-hmm. that's only by you doing it over and over and over and over again. Um, so mm, okay. I was in therapy, and I was like, this isn't working. Can I just like start like tossing myself and figuring this out? And she was kind of like. Oh, it's not that safe. And I'm like, well, we've been doing this for weeks and I haven't got it down. My legs don't seem to settle. Um, and she was like, you know what? Like, let's just do it. And we would just put mats everywhere. And I, that's how I transfer now. Like I literally just like get over and just like toss myself. Like, it's just kind of a not safe way, but it's just how I've been doing it for like four years. And, um, I, now I know like, I also have full sensation. So I know when my leg is going to extend. So if I go to do it and I feel my leg starting to move, I will go back and like reset. So you just yeah. start learning your body and you start learning what works for you and what doesn't. And I feel like that's the best advice I could give. Like despite watching videos, despite like even networking sometimes, cause I have never met anyone with as much tone as me ever. And I, I'm social butterfly and I love talking to people. So I feel like up until now, like that's just what's worked for me and a lot of practice. Um, so I think to those like that are looking out there that sometimes look for advice in other people, the fact that we're snowflakes, you need to have those like 15 friends because you're going to grab one thing from like, oh, you know what? My spasms do look like her or like my bowel program does look like his or, mm-hmm. you know, gonna like have to nitpick um so socializing is so important like you mentioned just because of that that particular reason like I'm I still like I said have met so many people and I have not found anyone that has like as hard as tone as I do um it doesn't mean I'm not independent and I haven't gotten around to doing stuff it's just my way obviously looks a lot different but it works for me that's only been through practice like and just Mm -hmm. try Things under safe environments so I feel like oh, that's when I really took advantage of like PTOT in the hospital and then I did it yeah. for like three months afterwards and then I still go to like physical therapy once a week and that's where I am walking and trying new things nothing that I do there it, I do outside of my home most of the time because I don't feel as comfortable and I don't feel as safe so I feel like yeah. finding those safe spaces and really taking advantage of them um is like what i can 100 percent like that's the best thing you can do yeah yeah now you definitely want to take advantage of those spaces while you have them because i feel like that that's where you that's where you kind of like not really master them but that's where you're going to really learn it i would that's where you're really going to get the information on how to do it properly that's yeah, you're not going to hurt yourself. Once you got it down, it's all about practice, but at least finding your techniques, yeah. finding what in your body means certain things. Like for me, like the whole spasm thing, like once I feel that leg starting to turn on, I'm like, oh, let me just wait, wait it out, you know, prop it back up, start from square one. So that's also mm-hmm. time is your worst enemy, but it can be your best friend if yeah. you plan accordingly. Like I know if I have somewhere to be at like, five i am prepping like way early in the day just because i don't want that like maybe mistransfer from the shower to make me like an hour late or 30 minutes or because then it just adds to stress that's when your disability becomes like hard and it gets you in those places where you hate your body and you should never want to be like that like you know it's not healthy to be in those places so i feel like the less you can avoid fighting your body the better mm-hmm. i agree i mm-hmm. agree and like i tell people all the time you look if you get on the schedule things will just mm-hmm. flow afterwards all right it's a little sacrifice in the morning to do whatever you want to do you know later on in the day so it's just a little sacrifice that's it if you sacrifice a little bit you will gain a lot on the independence yeah and all and right? it's like routine doesn't look the same like i know people that yeah do things backwards or do stuff at night or, you know, whatever the case may be, but like find whatever works for you and stick Mm -hmm. to it because your body will love consistency. Um, Even when it comes to like stretching and like other stuff, SCI related, it's not just um, like the important stuff. Even eating on time can be a big difference for SEIs. Like timing, how much liquid you have certain times a day 
mm-hmm. like the best. So yeah, uh, I I totally agree. I do I do everything you know in the morning, but I do hear about some people you know doing it at night. But then I also tell people you know whenever they want to you know talk to me about bowel care or something like that. Like I tell them I tr- I'm trying to eat dinner by. Six thirty, seven o'clock. All right. I don't really eat anything heavy after nine because you know I'll pay for it the next day. As far as you know, it just it just makes every like if I stick to the schedule, everything flows correctly. But if I get off a little bit, my body my body knows. And then not that I like I pay for it in time. All right. That's how I would say, and it'll push me back a little bit. So I'll get my day started a little bit later. But as long as you stick to the schedule. You'll be good to go. And you can do whatever you want to do throughout the day. And I feel like that that's, a, I feel like, I feel like when it comes to people really kind of getting on a schedule, I I guess they're just intimidated a little bit by it. And I feel like that that's kind of what, you know, stops them a little bit sometimes. So, but um, it is yeah. what it is. Yes, each one's situation, but a lot of it You're is right. just ability. Like, and that's a, yeah. with a lot of in life. You want to be a good employee? be self-accountable like if you want to be a good friend be self-accountable like it's just that's just the same thing it's just something that like I think sometimes people feel like if I wasn't if I didn't have this disability it's not something I'd want I need to do so that's where like the hate comes from but it's like I can either fight myself my whole life or just accept it and like do something that's going to be better and beneficial for me at the end of the day yeah but I feel like that the acceptance part is is one of the hardest parts Oh, yeah, it's like the big, but I feel what I've, well, at least what I personally, and then from everyone else, I just feel like the sooner it happens, like the more your life gets better. You are, look, look, you are right, you are right about that, it's it's just that for some people, it's just longer, it's just, it takes longer than others, like for me, (laughs) it took like two and a half years, you know, and it, yeah, it was a it was an ugly two and a half years, and you know, but some people they jump right into it. So, but but some people it's it's not like that. Um, but I heard you say earlier that you were doing some things with the Triumph Foundation. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, so they're like this really cool organization that gives yeah. back a lot to people with disabilities, whether it be like funding for school, funding for like employment opportunities. Like, uh, but I think like my favorite thing they do is like do their group rehab hospital groups, which is mm-hmm. what I have. unfortunately right now because of COVID, it is a closed group to like the um, ambassadors, which would be like me and the actual patients who are newly injured. Um, mm-hmm. But from- or it's like open to the public so that's really nice because like um you can learn from like other people who have been in their chair for a while and also like you can kind of see like a glimpse of like what it could be like um but I will say like in comparison now to like having it be a closed group it's almost nice because they can kind of um work through a lot of their things without someone hounding down like it gets better it gets better don't be sad like you don't need that yeah. out sometimes you just need to like let it out and be sad and cry it out and you know and that's what group is sometimes sometimes it's a lot of positivity sometimes it's a lot of questions being answered whether it's like resources and references or sometimes it's just me having someone crying on my shoulder for the hour like it mm-hmm varies um but i just think it's like the best thing um i'm still in contact with a lot of the people that i have ran group with i always give them you know my um social media stuff my number um uh, because you never know and i have some girls will text me months after and be like okay so i just think i'm ready to go back to work or i'm just i'm just starting to drive like how is that whole process or like um just like a lot of that stuff uh in particular i feel like i love it because it's a way for me to give back but in a sense when i got injured like the group was open but it was like 90 percent males like 90 percent. there was one girl and she didn't always go so it was like i had like no one to talk to and the other lady was like in her 60s with grandkids already so it was like i like I couldn't relate. Um, so yeah. now I like make it a point to anytime they have a girl, like they let me know. And I'm like there just because like, 
like, you just need that. Like, you just need to have someone that you can actually relate to, um, that you feel comfortable talking to. And yeah, but they're this like amazing organization. So if you guys haven't heard of them, go check them out. They're called Triumph. They're on okay. Instagram, Facebook, website, mm-hmm. everything. And yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, now, are you working at the moment? I'm sorry. Are you working at the moment? Um. Right. I went back to my original job when I first got injured, which was Vans. I love that. Ugh, that company is near and dear to my I heart. I seen. I seen that on your social media. Yes, they are just so like they rearranged their whole store to be like disability friendly for me to go back to work. Mm. They sponsored a lot of stuff when I first got injured. Um, I met the man himself. He's so sweet. Gave me a full tour. They're just really down to earth. Really. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love them. So I feel like I had to go back because I, they just did so much for me during my time of absence and like literally checked in like all the time. Like it's just like this, like, cute little family um but eventually so it looked like in the pictures yeah it really is like it's like the best um but aside from that I did get my master's in social work um mm-hmm. specifically I want to do medical so I was working okay. for at Loma Linda the hospital mm-hmm. um you want to continue that in the future um I don't know when necessarily I just feel like right now Vans hits my needs in the way that I can be part time. Um, they're very, like I said, disability friendly. So ever if I have mm-hmm. medical or like I'm just like, you know, as an SCI, you can wake up and just like have like the worst UTI and like be like throwing up. You know, like it's just this injury is like very unpredictable, and I feel like yeah. it's like my comfort zone because I can just let them know like SCI stuff, and they're like, okay, no, that's no problem. You know. Um, so I feel like right now I just love it there, but eventually I will use my degree that I worked really hard for. <laughs> okay. The- okay. Now, now for any women out there or, you know what, for anybody period out there who might be in a similar situation, um, what advice would you give to them? Mm. As far as, like, wanting to go back to school or, you know, wanting to travel, like, what advice would you give to the people out there? I would just say do it. Just do it? Just just do it. Um, That's a Nike slogan, not a van slogan. Yes. It's a Nike slogan, but yes, like, let's not. Um, (laughs) But but literally, I feel like just go for it. Like, I agree. That's me. Ripping the bandaid off should be my slogan because it's just rip left and right for me. Like school, driving, everything was I just threw myself into because Mm -hmm. I feel like one, you are never going to be 100 prepared for anything in life. Anything. There's not one thing that you can't say is going to happen for a fact. Um, So I feel like you're never going to be like 100% ready. And two, it's not going to go 100% perfect wheelchair or not disability or not um so i feel like you won't really know until you do it and like worst case scenario you hate it and you never go back like Mm -hmm. worst case scenario you show up to school that first day and you just think this is like the worst thing of my life and then you just call it quits like no one's gonna that. worst case scenario you like start driving and you're a wreck and you say let me hold this off or let me never do this again like that's fine too Mm -hmm. i think People put so much pressure on, like, having to be good at everything. You're not. You're never going to be good at everything. And I feel like the not trying, though, that's what really, like, I feel like is, like, not acceptable. (laughs) Because I feel like no no matter the case, like, we are in such, like, I mean, shout out to Judy who just passed away. But, like, thanks to really those, like, entrepreneurs and people that, like, literally put their lives out on the line for us to pioneers right there the school and like have access to all these things and for you to like not just like take the opportunity i think is like does those certain people a misjustice um i feel like yeah like do it and what's the worst that can happen a no or it didn't work out and people should accept that like like, i love when people are like i tried it and i didn't like it and it's my favorite thing and i'm like but you tried it like yay like that first sentence Mm -hmm. yep well, look, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast and 
I really enjoy going on your social media, seeing all the amazing things that you do. Because sometimes I feel like I'm traveling with you or, you know, like just just seeing you in those destinations just, you know, puts it out there for anybody else that, hey, look, if I'm in a wheelchair, I can travel, yes. you know, there as well. So I really appreciate you, what you're doing for the community. And I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. And I can't wait to see where this podcast takes you and, you know, just enjoying life over here and letting you exactly life. So <laughs> I'm exactly. glad you, you enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. So look, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and you have a good day. Yeah, you have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Bye.